Hey everybody, it's Emily at Arg Schooling, and today I have another book haul. This is my, my like March, April book haul, I think, because most of these books I acquired months of March and April. I have a lot of books to get through. I purchased these mostly for Build Your Library purposes, either for levels that I'm updating or level 11, which I have a huge stack of things geared towards that. So let's just get into it. I'm actually going to go in reverse and I'm going to start with the books I got this weekend. I went to Gibson's Bookstore for Independent Bookstore Day and of course I bought books because I was at a bookstore. What else am I going to do? So let me just show you the stack I got there. I wasn't looking for anything in particular. I was just sort of walking around the store, which is always just, you know, a, it's a recipe for me to overspend, really. But they did have a used section, so I went there first. And they, I picked up Speak by Louisa Hall. I've actually only seen this a little bit around, and I just, this cover, for whatever reason, catches my eye. I really, I don't know a lot about this. It's story about a bunch of different people through different periods of time and their stories all connect in some way I think and that's really all I know. I also picked up a new Terry Pratchett book. I picked up Thief of Time by Terry Pratchett because I'm just kind of building my collection. I don't even know what number this is in the Discworld series. I don't even care anymore. I'm just kind of whenever a one catches my eye I buy it. So eventually I'll have all of them. I don't even know what this one's really about. Oh, this has to do with the monks of history, I guess. I was thinking it might be time travel or something like that, but I don't know, I've not read that one yet. At my daughter's recommendation, I finally picked up Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetus. I loved uh, her book Shades of Grey. So I've really been wanting to get another of her books, so I picked up Salt to the Sea. I think this takes place during World War II as well. I don't really know that much about it going in. My daughter read it and she loved it and she's been bugging me to read it ever since, so I have it now. I also recently just read The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers and I loved it so, so much. I'm going to talk about that in another video. But I've been really, I, I just, I really want more. So I picked up A Close and Common Orbit and yeah, this is the sequel. I think I really can't talk about it without spoilers, so I'm not going to do that. But if you've read the first one, you'll know, and it's it sounds awesome. I really, I want more. It's very, I don't know how to describe it, it it's like happy science fiction with nice people. Like, how, that's, it's awesome. And because they were, ha it was Independent Bookstore Day, they had a deal where if you spend $25, you can get a free ARC. They had a big, like, thing full of ARCs that they, they were giving away, so... I actually got two. My daughter has the other one and I don't feel like going upstairs to get it. But I can't remember the name of the book. <laughs> Emergency Calling maybe? Something like that. She'll probably haul that on, in her channel or blog or something. But the one I got that I kept for me is Iron Gold by Pierce Brown. Now this is silly because I haven't finished the first trilogy yet. I'm st I, I reread the first book as a read aloud last year and ever since I've been meaning to get to the rest of it. I want to. It will happen. And now I have the arc of Iron Gold, which is a trilogy that he is writing now that takes place in the future of after the events of the first trilogy. I don't know if it's like a huge time jump or a small one. I really don't know. But yeah, so I have this arc now. Also that day we went to our town dump and they have a recycling center where people can leave things and you can pick up or leave your own things and it's all free so they somebody had just I swear they dumped their entire home library so while I was sad that they had to get rid of all their books I was happy because they had some that I wanted and so I now have a copy of Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood and that's really exciting because I've been really wanting to read more Margaret Atwood I loved The Handmaid's Tale so now I have this I don't know anything about it I know there's a series on Netflix about this that I keep meaning to watch, but then I don't because I want to read the book first, so now I have the book. And they also had What Alice Forgot by Leanne Moriarty. I want to read more of her books. I love Big Little Lies. I, I own The Husband's Secret, which I haven't gotten to yet. 
And now I have this one. Some of these you probably have already seen me talk about elsewhere, but I'll haul them anyway and just mention them briefly. I have Arusha and the End of Time by Roshani Chaksky. I don't know if I'm saying her name right. I'm probably not. And I got this to read with my youngest, and it's Hindu mythology, which I am just ecstatic about because I love anything from India. I think it's fascinating. I've just read another book about India, and I'm just like on this Indian kick, and I want more. <laughs> I need more. So I'm very excited. We're going to have to read this soon. Speaking of mythology, another book I got is Circe by Madeline Miller. I had pre-ordered this. I was really excited about it. I loved her first book. That was like my favorite book of last year was Song of Achilles. I loved it that much. It was just so good. And so when I heard she was coming out with a new book, uh, yeah, of course I was going to get it. I don't know what I'm going to get to it, but I have it. And it's beautiful. Isn't this just the prettiest book cover? I love the gold. The spine looks really nice. It's, it's just super pretty. I also bought Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. This book I wasn't sure about it first. It, it just sounded like Abraham Lincoln vampire hunter type story, but YA, and I wasn't sure I was up for that. I, so it's a zombie civil war book, and it sounded weird. And I, I was on the fence about it, so I wasn't really looking to get it. But then I kept hearing so many people say it was amazing, I decided to grab it anyway. So I have this. This is actually going in my potentials for level 12 pile. Yeah, I'm already thinking ahead, so I don't, I'm not going to get to this right away, obviously, if it's going in that pile. I have other things I have to get to first, but yeah, I don't know that much about it. So it's, it's like post-Civil War America, where they had to end the war because they needed to deal with the weird zombie horde uprising situation, and supposedly it shines a light on our society today somehow, I don't know. I'm intrigued, so I, I picked it up. For my youngest, I picked this up, A Child Through Time, The Book of Children's History. This is just a really cool book where instead of like the books where they show you children around the world, this is children through history, so you get a two-page spread for each child, and it just shows you what their life would have been like, and the way they dress, the foods they might have eaten, did they learn, did they go to school, that sort of thing. Really cool. Really cool. We're enjoying this. Um, this next bunch of books are all for the update for level 2, so if you watch this and you see them, you're probably going to hear me talk about them again when I do my level 2 update video. I debated over including these, but not all of them made it in, so I figure I'll just show all of them now and then you'll know which ones are included when I put, post the update video. So first up is Odd and the Frost Giants, and this is by Neil Gaiman. And it is lovely. Like, I love Neil Gaiman's books anyway, but the illustrations in this, and the, it's illustrated by Chris Riddell, and it's just, it's beautiful. I love the these black and white line drawings, and there's a lot of silver in them. It's just, it's really pretty. And this is a story about a Viking boy named Odd and his adventures with the gods. It's just, ugh, it's so much fun. I really enjoyed this. I, I really love Norse anything. And so, yeah, I, when I realized I hadn't actually read this yet, I was kind of surprised with myself because it's right up my alley. So I'm glad I finally picked this up. I also picked up Genghis Khan, The Brave Warrior Who Bridged East and West. This is a cool book because not only is it a biography about Genghis Khan, who usually just gets looked over for Marco Polo. But this is also a bilingual book, and it's written in both English and Chinese. So I just think that's really neat. So it's a really cute biography. Next three are all art books. Only one of them is making it into level two, but I bought all of them because I thought they were really cool. The first up is the one I'm actually using in level two. I've been looking for a good art replacement for the Usborne Intro to Art, and I think this might be it. This is the Children's Interactive Story of Art, the Essential Guide to the World's Most Famous Artists and Paintings. And this is put together by the National Gallery and Susie Hodge. And if you might recognize that name, because she did the art books that I used originally in Level 1, the Ancient Art series, which is now way out of print and just depressing how expensive people are selling them for. <laughs> but anyway, this book is really cool. And instead of internet links, you get a free app when you use this book, and you can use it to play games, to learn more about the art. It's just, it's really, really cool. 
and the, the spreads are really well done. It's just a great little book. This next book is just super cute, but it doesn't really go on level two. So I'm going to save this and probably use it somewhere else. <laughs> I don't know where, but I really want to fit it in somewhere. And that is Artists and Their Pets, True Stories of Famous Artists and Their Animal Friends. And this is by Susie Hodge. And it's just really cute. It's a, Most of the artists in here are all, all modern artists, so I don't think it fits in level two at all. But I just couldn't pass it up. And it's just really cute, really cute illustrations. And it's about artists and work, their work with animals, their pets, and that sort of thing. It's just a really cute little book. And I was excited to come across this. I think my, I think my youngest is really going to like this book. This next book I picked up, really I bought it for my daughter because she's really into art. And I thought she would enjoy it. And this is the Great Big Art History Coloring Book. And this is just really neat. So I'm just going to give you a spread here. So you get like this really big spread, and this book is huge too, but I don't know if you can see this well. So you get this huge spread of um, a piece of art. Like in this one, it's Monet's garden with the bridge that he always painted. So it's a really cool book. It's all about different artists and their styles, and it goes through time. Like the first spread is prehistoric cave art. There's Egyptian art, Greek. And so it goes through time. And in the very end, you can create your own art museum by adding your own pictures. So I just think this book is really cool. I've also been collecting for other things. I have this book. I don't know if it's going to fit in or not. I've been trying to figure out if I'm going to change any other books in level four, but I did pick this up. This is Sixy, maybe. This is a Wicked History book about Sixy, I think is how you say her name. She was a, the Empress of China in the late 1800s, and this is one of the Wicked History books. So I really like these, these biographies. They kind of show you like, oh, this is a, who is labeled a villain, but We'll let you decide if you think they were a villain or not. And so I think that's really, really interestingly how they do that. So I picked this up as a possible replacement for Rebels of the Heavenly Kingdom because really there's not a lot out there that takes place in China in the late 1800s. It's just, there's nothing. I think there's maybe three books. This one, Rebels of the Heavenly Kingdom, and I think Dragon's Gate by Lawrence Yep, I believe, is the other one I have in my potential pile. Anyway. So we'll see if that works out or not. I also picked up a gorgeous Harry Potter book. This is Newt Scamander's Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. We had the little one that came way back in the, in the box set with two books, The Quidditch Through the Ages and Fantastic Beasts, and it was cute. But this book is gorgeous. Like, this is so pretty. Just, just look at that. I'll give you a minute beautiful right it's gorgeous this whole book is like that it's just stunning i'm so, I, i'm i'm so excited to have this i it's beautiful i also picked up the book this is also for level 11 hiroshima by john hersey Her hersey i think it's hersey and this is one that I, i've heard about a lot i've never actually read it but it's supposed to be one of the definitive books about hiroshima and I feel like I should read it, so I'm looking forward to it. It's probably going to be in level 11. That's not set in stone, though, so don't, like, don't hold me to it. But it's in my level 11 pile as a very possible potential. <laughs> and another book I picked up is called The Search, and this is by Eric Huvel, Rud van der Rohl, and Lise Shippers. And this caught my eye because this is about um, a girl. She survives the war and makes it out during the liberation, but she doesn't know what happened to the rest of her family. So she, this is her journey to find out where what happened to them and how they all died. And it's a graphic novel, and I just really wanted to read it. And I came across that because I was researching for this next giant stack you're going to see here. That if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen this. I had this idea one evening. I, I think it started because I'd read an article about how so many people today don't know about the Holocaust or the millennials or something like that don't know much about the Holocaust and how tragic that is. 
And as I mentioned that to my husband, I said, how awful is it that so many people don't know about that? And he said, what about all the other genocides? Why, why, why is the Holocaust more important than any of the other ones? And I was like, you know, that's a very good point. I couldn't argue him. So, uh, and I was like, you know, none of them get much attention. People want to gloss over the ugly things in history. And, and yeah, I get that, but you shouldn't because those ugly things are important to know about so that we don't keep doing those ugly things. So this just like got my wheels turning and I couldn't shut my brain up one night. And so I got up in the morning and I did a whole bunch of research and bought a whole bunch of things. So I don't know how this is gonna work out yet, but my brain is, is, is working on this genocide elective. It will either be a part of level 11 or something completely separate. I don't know yet. So I'm just gonna do this quickly because there's a lot. So I have two spine books for that. I have Genocide, which is a groundwork guide by Jane Springer, and this is more like a YA kind of history text. It's a, and so this works nicely as a spine, and this covers the topic of genocide. It focuses on like genocide overall. And then I also have to Kill a People, Genocide in the 20th Century, and this is by John Cox. And this one is a little bit deeper than the first book, and it focuses on uh, various genocides. The Armenian Genocide, the Holocaust, the Cambodian Genocide, the Rwanda Genocide. So it focuses on specific ones. I like this because it has discussion questions and things to think about and discuss, so it works nicely as a, a text spine. Then I have this stack of books. <laughs> yeah, I'm insane. I'm just gonna do this really quick. I'm not gonna talk about each one beyond like which genocide it focuses on. So I have the Sandcastle Girls by Chris Bo Bohalian, I think, and this is the Armenian Genocide. First They Killed My Father, A Daughter of, of Cambodia Remembers by Lung Ung, and this is obviously the Cambodian Genocide. I think this one's a little bit too young, but I have it in my pile anyway, and that is The Red Pencil by Andrea Davis Pinckney, and this is, I believe, about Uganda, about a girl in a refugee camp, and it's written in verse, so it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit young for what I'm looking at, but the cover caught my eye, so I bought it anyway. The Day of the Pelican by Katherine Patterson, and this is Kosovo. Then I have Girl at War by Sarah Novik, and this, I believe, is also Kosovo, Yugoslavia, and all of the Bosnian War. I have Tree Girl by Ben Mikkelsen, and this is Mexico, and Mexican Indians. Tim Tingle's How I Became a Ghost, this is Native American, specifically is about the Trail of Tears. I also have Hidden Roots by Joseph Bruchak, and again, this is about Native Americans. I have Broken Memory, a novel of Rwanda by Elizabeth Combress, which is obviously Rwanda. Machete Season by Jean Hatzfeld, and this again is Rwanda. And I have We Wish to Inform You That Tomorrow will be, We Will Be Killed With Our Families, Stories from Rwanda, and this is by Philip Gurevich. And then I have Esphere is Alive, inspired by a true story by Andrea Simon, and this is The Holocaust. I also have Mapping the Bones by Jane Yolen, which is also The Holocaust. So there's a lot going on in this pile. I don't know how this is going to work out. I don't know how I'm going to read all these because I still have a lot to read for level 11. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit crazy. So that is my book haul. I counted before I started. So 36 books in this pile today. I hope you enjoyed this video and yeah I'll probably do another haul next month because you know I can't control this. At all. Did you get any new books this month? I'd love to hear about it down below. You can share in the comments and we can chat. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Ha happy reading! Bye!